believe that the tile six gives it some, you know, very different uh, interaction with the salt. Are those oxidation fires? These are all reduction cone ten, uh, cone nine to eleven because it's a newer kiln. <laughs> so, there was a cone nine area, which this red arc lighting actually cone eight is really gorgeous yellow, and then it gets more red and darker higher up. Um, so that's this glaze, and those are the questions I'm asking and questions it's asking me. I also really am interested in every little fingerprint on this handle where the handle of the clay was pulled. Uh, this glaze highlights every one of those lines. You know, it's like watching the way that a little muddy stream will enter into a river, and the river will pull that silt along for a while, and you see these little streak marks of sediment moving, and this is kind of dirt and mud stuck on the side of the porcelain uh, and the inside too. So, uh, we can pass these around as we go. This is almost the extreme opposite. It's the same clay, same working. Uh, this clay has about 10% zirco packs in it a little bit of iron, and it's like completely covered with a snowstorm. There's no, there's barely any definition. Very subtle line near the rim um, that didn't fill in all the way. It just, it's very, it's all about subtlety, and it's a very different tactile experience as well. Um, something about maybe this one needs to be just held more. There's some, some sharp lines that just go back through. It's almost like wearing, uh, a big thick sweater and when you move your arm your elbow kind of scratches that fabric just a little bit whereas that one is like wearing a spandex or something it's just so tight it shows everything <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'll try in the next week I'll try to get my information up on my website so that you guys if you want these places and all you can just grab them from there uh, this is one of Val's glazes, um, molasses celadon, and I took out the extra iron that he was adding in, so it's colored just by Barnard. And it, it reminds me of this almost an Alden slip kind of a glaze that just, there's a masking that occurs where it's milky on the surface, and then it highlights various throw lines, and, uh, settles behind uh, areas like this rim is barely, uh, to the fingers, I can barely feel it, but visually the glaze is loaded in and it's darker in that area. Um, the inside of it, sorry, I'm sort of losing what I'm to say here. I'm interested in this glaze for, because of uh, history. And one of my favorite pots is um, at the Victoria Albert Museum and it was a Song Dynasty fluted vertical jar that has these great flutes on it. Uh, that break back through this Temapu type of a glaze, <laughs> a slip type of a glaze. And then it has this roll of glaze moving down that's more transparent. I definitely, I pay tribute to history in a lot of ways and quote things out of history uh, and then sort of bring them into my own work. This is a satin glaze, another one from uh, Val, or it's Rick Haynes really, um, called Haynes Satin White, and I've added 3% iron to it. And this is the glaze, when I talked last night about the white cup and saucer, this is that same base. Um, it's a calcium magnesium satin, and it's just got, it's one of the softest feeling surfaces, yet durable, uh, that I've come across. And, and I've used it for a while now, trying to figure it out, how sharp of a line breaks back through it. Um, there's also the thing that happens where there are particular firings that treat this glaze really well, and other firings where it not happy. Um, and I feel like this was a particularly good firing in the way that the clay is coming back through. Um, like if I bend my hand in the way that the bone, the knuckles stretch the skin, that's what's happening on these lines as they're poking back through that skin as it bends out to see the definition of Lately, I have been. Yeah, I've been using one glaze on the forms quite often. What would you do using two? Did you ever get really ornate with it? No, I haven't. Sorry. 
path. I mean, the salt is a glaze yeah. as well, and, and choosing where the form, where the form, you know, what forms go into that atmosphere is, is definitely a choice. Um, but no, I haven't really worked with decorating in that way. I'm sort of putting the information into the clay that I want, and then choosing the glaze through that. Do the future bring. I mean, I sketch. I sketch on pots a lot. I'll draw on greenware and scratch through, and you know, I'm playing with a lot of different things in my studio. They're just not ready to go out in the world. Uh, and then, just real quick before I take over too much time, these two bowls. This was fired at Cone 10 Reduction. Uh, just a very smooth form with the celadon that has 0.2% chrome in it as the colorant rather than iron or other other ways of coloring. Um, yeah. Very subtle smooth surface, um, less definition on the inside of it. This clay, I'm sort of losing my way here in conversation. Um, and then this is the same glaze as the first cup, the red art and whiting, but this is on stoneware and in the salt, and it's just a very, very thin layer, and I'm, I'm enjoying that, how it's showing, showing the clay. I think I'm going to explore some more glazes that will be this tight and this thin on my work. Um, maybe they don't have color in them, though. So maybe there's a matte clear that I can come up with. I think what I'm, my interest, uh, just recently, and I want to go to some museums and look for it, is um, sort of arts and crafts surfaces, and I know they used to use acid washes and things to get matte glazes afterwards, but you know, if I can get that green cell <coughs> but in a subtle matte without barium, uh, you know, I try not to use toxic things in my studio if I can avoid it. So I think that's the next direction I want to try to head in, is these types of matte, but in various other colors. Um, and I'm also working with some earthenware. I have a bunch of terracotta pots I grew uh, and messed with the surfaces and then put slip on and bisque them at cone 08 and then did some tests and they all pinholed. So I'm going to bisque them again hotter. Um, I was advised to even bisque up to 01 and then be able to glaze at 04 and start playing with other surfaces at low temperature. So this cellophon, this minty green cellophon, um, Jolly Rancher, is 2% chrome? Point two. Yeah. It's such a minute amount that it's... it's yeah. amount. I mean, I've made it with point 0.1%, which is just, you know, it's 10 grams for 10,000. And so it's not, you know, ball mill it up and put it in there. It's pretty amazing. It's really, really hard to uh, make small amount of test. It's in the dealing with eighth of a gram or something. <coughs> yeah, I haven't, it's not enough that it's ever fumed on to other places. It has only fuming things I've gotten were when I fire other people's tests. <laughs> yeah, okay. So how much of a clear stuff? I, I normally make these um, two or three at a time. I, I made them like a three ten pound bowl, which I excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so they're normally quite considerably. But I think this was probably about twenty, and thirty takes it out to about here, which is as big as the shelves. I can't unless I put them on the top shelf, which I'm not really going to do because if anything drops off the roof, that's it, the whole thing. So I put them between three props, there, yeah, there, there, and there, and about that big is about as big as I can get on the shelf. And I always prop them, place them over the firebox, so about the foot ring is right on the edge of the shelf, and this much of the bowl is sitting over the firebox, so it always gets nice and uh, ashy around the particular one edge, and then that blends into the clay box. Um, but uh, I've just enjoyed, I can't make too many of them, because I simply can't fire that many of them. If I put more than two or three in the field, it takes up so much space. 
but I enjoy making them. And, um, the clay I use at home uh, is probably a little softer than this when I throw it. It's, as I said, it's very friendly, very plastic, very willing to go wherever you want it to go, and it doesn't collapse or move either. So they're not so difficult to, to, to throw. Um, and the nice thing, of course, by doing it by this method, you're not having to center such a bloody great big lump of clay. You just do it bit by bit. Now, somebody like Sven, they have pieces with his film. He can make 20 of these as big as as big as my biggest ones, and five them all in the same building. You know, it's a, it's a whole different type of fish. I'm not quite set up in that way for making lots of really big things. Uh, my kiln is reasonably large, but it's um, it's not so big. You know, I never, funnily enough, I never had, and I still don't have any ambition to make whopping great pots. These big things like Sven sort of. Um, you know, courses for courses and so on. I, 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 I don't really want to make pots whose um, greatest accuracy is their size. And what I was going to come on to say about making dishes like this is that um, you can then decorate them in a variety of ways. And most of the ones I've done like this so far, I've waited until they firmed up a little bit. And then I've used stamps to impress around, sort of a necklace of stamps around. Uh, and then sometimes I'll take the green ash glaze and glaze them the back. They're very quick to glaze, you only glaze the inside. And, um, and then I will use a slip trailer and put a thick layer of chemical. That's how it looks nuka over each of the stamps so that in the firing you get this kind of run of white coming down into the center of the plate, which could be nice. But, you know, just for the sake, I'm not obviously not going to be able to finish this because it's too soft, but um, sometimes what you can do is, going back to talking about those lines that I was putting on, on this cup, and if I put a line in the center of here, you can see if I do that, to me that's really boring. It's a single line, starting and finishing at the same level. It's completely parallel. And to me, I find that mm -hmm. sterile. Yeah. So instead of doing it that way, you know it's me. Is that first letter? This is probably a little bit fine 
tooth on here is probably a little bit small for this. It needed to be slightly bigger because of the scale of the thing. I, I, I don't know that. I don't think I've got a bigger one. Oh, it's a 